Hi, welcome to my home in Teddington. I'd like you to introduce you to my heat pump. Heat pumps are the talk of Teddington at the minute. Everybody is talking about heat pumps. Heat pumps, heat pumps, heat pumps, heat pumps. And this video is a little explainer about how they work. This one is sitting here and it's been keeping my house warm all winter using just a tiny amount of uh, electricity. As you can hear, it's very quiet. Uh, the fan is going, it is working. Uh, anyway, it's quite cold. <laughs> so let's go inside and I'll tell you how heat pumps work. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen and I've got some fine demonstration stuff here and a few PowerPoint slides. Let's begin. So heat pumps, what is a heat pump? Uh, what does it do and how does it work? So let me begin. So this is the picture of the heat pump. And what it does is it replaces a gas boiler in a house. It supplies hot water to the house, hot water for taps and showers and things. Uh, and it heats the radiators to keep the house warm. That's what it does. Uh, and uh, there are three connections to it. So if we looked around the back when we were outside, we would have seen these three connections. So uh, you, you put cold water into it. So you can see the cold water flows around this pipe. It's got insulation on it and goes into the pump. And the pump works its engineering magic and out comes hot water. Fantastic. And that flows back into the house. And it's all powered by electricity. So there are just three connections, electricity in to give it the power to operate, and then you put cold water in and hot water comes out. That's how it works. Uh, uh, and this is a complicated graph showing how it uh, operates. So first of all, uh, what we've got here is, this is the last week, the February the 15th through to February the 22nd. And these, this is the temperature outside. You can see it's down to about three degrees. Got quite warm here at 12 or 13 degrees. And then uh, it's cold again at this part. And uh, even though it's cold outside, the, air, the, air, the uh, heat pump is able to take heat from the air. And uh, you can see, so here's the temperature of the hot water that it put in the hot water tank. And you can see on that day, it took uh, energy out of air at just under 10 degrees Celsius and heated it up to about 65 degrees Celsius. Wow, what a great trick. And uh, that's for heating the hot water for the uh, showers and so on. And, uh, but it also heats the radiators. So if we look at another day, so here just on the 19th, uh, it was around about uh, three, three degrees and the radiators were uh, the water in the radiators was heated up to about 37 degrees Celsius. So it's heating the, uh, taking energy out of the air, putting it into the water, flowing it around the radiators. Uh, and you can see that right throughout it, this, that, that's the temperature in the radiators, and this is the temperature inside the house. And you see right through the week that, that there's a data point every two minutes on this graph. The temperature hasn't deviated within more than a, a fraction of a degree Celsius from about 20 and a half degrees or something like that. So the house is not nice and warm. So that's what it does in practice. It makes hot water and it makes uh, the house warm. So how does it do it? Well, at its heart, uh, a heat pump is just a pipe, literally a pipe, and it has, uh, it's filled with a working fluid. Now, the, wor the working fluid is a, a special fluid. It's chosen for its very particular physical properties. And I've got some great demos to show you with a working fluid. Uh, they're just coming up in a minute. Uh, so it's got a working fluid inside and it's split into two parts. So one thing it's got in it is a compressor pump. So that can take the working fluid and squeeze it. Uh, and then it's got an expansion valve. So those two things divide the pump into two parts. Uh, on this side, things are going to get cold uh, and the fluid is at low pressure. And that part is sometimes called the evaporator. And on this side, things are going to get hot. 
uh, things are going to be at high pressure and this side is called the condenser. Now, I want to get rid of all this writing so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour the pipes in so you can remember this is this side's coldish and this side's warmish. So there we go so that's how the heat pump works. So we want to take a look at these two things the the compressor and the expansion valve and how that operates with a working fluid. So let's take a look at the expansion valve first and see how that works. Okay, so let's do some experiments uh, to show how the expansion valve works with the working fluid. So the working fluid in my pump is, uh, the one outside is propane. The work, this pretend working fluid is butane. Uh, and uh, inside this bottle, it's held as a liquid at high pressure. So inside here, it's like the working fluid on the high pressure part of the pump, the compressor part of the compressed part of the pump. Uh, and this thing here is an expansion valve. We're going to allow the butane to expand out here. And let's just do that and see what we see. So if I, I don't, I don't know if you can see, oh, it's very tricky to get this just right. I can feel it becoming cold. It did come out a bit. Let me just move up a bit closer and see if we can. Oh, did you see that sort of spray come out? Yeah, that's a mist. It's got so, it's got very, very cold as it comes out. We can measure how cold it is. So I've got a thermometer here. Uh, it says about 21 degrees at the minute. If I put it in here and Try and hold it roughly in place without getting too cold myself. You can see, you see the temperature's gone right down. We've gone down to ten degrees. It'll go, it'll go much colder than that. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. It's minus thirty-eight degrees. Wow. That's got really, really cold. And that's similar to what the propane does in there. So when you expand it, you pressurize it first and then expand it through a valve, it gets really, really cold. So let's do a trick now with a balloon. What we're gonna do is put some in a balloon and uh, I'm gonna try and squeeze it into the balloon. Let's so I think I've got so oh, I can see the liquid, it's condensing there. So I've got some liquid in the balloon now, and I'm going to seal the balloon. So what's happening now is that we've expanded it, it's turned into a liquid, and now it's collecting heat from the environment. So it got much colder than the room, and so now it's it's collecting heat from the environment and turning into a gas. So can you see the balloon is getting bigger and it's taking heat from my, from my hand, it's taking heat from the environment and putting it into the working fluid. The working fluid is capturing the heat from the environment and it can do that because it got so cold initially. So that's the, it's captured energy from the environment. So, the next so let's take a look now at the compressor part of the heat pump. We did the expansion and showed how when you expanded the working fluid, it got cold. What I want to show you now is that when you compress it, it gets hot. So 
uh, let's get, uh, so I've got a, a separate thing here. I've got a, a little tube here. Uh, I don't know if I can hold that in the right place. Where, where, where is it? There we go. Uh, so it's a tube and I've, it's got a thermocouple in to measure the temperature and I've put a rubber bung in the bottom to block the tube. So I'm going to put a little bit of butane in here and then put a piston in to compress it. So let's get some butane in here. Don't need very much. It should just... Butane is heavier than air, so it should just sink down. I'm sure that's fine. Let's put the block in here, the, the piston in here. And then what I'm going to do is remember to plug in the thermocouple. This, this one goes in here. And we switch to that one. So that's the temperature in here. Uh, let's get that out of the way. So it says about 23, 22.9 degrees. And if I compress it now, it only went up by a degree or so, not very much. Let's try compressing it a bit faster, a bit harder. So it shot up to 24. What I'm going to do is put uh, this thing on which will capture the maximum value. And let's try one more compression, a big hard one. Oh, did you see it flash up there? Briefly, I thought it went to 50 degrees. Let's just try that again. 26 degrees. So if you keep pumping it, you can get the gas to warm up. Now, that's what, oh, I seem to have, uh, maybe I've mashed the <laughs> thermocouple, but that's what happens when you compress the working fluid. As you compress it, it gets hotter. So now, if we look back here, we can see what's going on. The pump is moving working fluid around here. It comes here as it gets compressed, it gets hot, it moves around, it reaches the expansion valve, it gets cold, and then it moves around here, uh, so what we do to make this useful, let's get that out of the way, what we do to make that this useful is uh, we make this pipe very, very long. Uh, it's very long and very thin and we blow air over it. So we have a fan and it blows or sucks air past this tube. And so uh, here the uh, working fluid is very cold. So as the air flows over it, even though the air can be at zero degrees Celsius, the working fluid is colder. So the heat flows from the air into the working fluid and the working fluid captures that heat energy and takes it up to the compressor. So in the compressor, it compresses it and it gets hot. And what we do is we take our pipe uh, from our house so and we run it next to this uh, to the pipe in the in the heat pump uh, which has got the hot working fluid in so when we put cold water in it flows through this pipe and it takes the heat from the uh, from the, from the working fluid at the in the compressor side and out comes hot water so obviously the working fluid cools down and then it gets uh, expanded again and the process goes on so what that can, let's take a look at this picture again, showing uh, 15th of February to the 22nd of February, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 Celsius. Uh, and remember, this is the temperature outside. This is the temperature of the rooms inside. This is the temperature of the water in the radiators in green. And this is the hot water temperature in, stored in the hot water tank. And so let's take, uh, say, for example, this day on the 16th, uh, you can see that it, it was very mild outside and so the compressor, the heat pump didn't have to work very hard to, to warm the water up to, for the radiators at about 30 degrees. 
but on the 15th it was down at three degrees and the compressor had to work very hard to heat the water up to 40 degrees celsius in order well 37 degrees celsius in order to uh, flow that through the radiator and keep the house warm so the pump has to work at different speeds uh, and with different uh, strengths it, on, on different days so let's see how that works so suppose we want uh, the pump to get hotter uh, or to produce more heat then what we can do is we can blow more air past this evaporator so the fan can go faster suck more air through and uh, extract more heat or the compressor can run faster so if it runs faster then we pump more working fluid round but this is where the electricity comes in this is the main place in the pump that does the work that that we have to pay for on the electricity bill so uh, what we'd like is to run the pump as as uh, at as low a speed as possible in order to uh, maximize the amount of uh, uh, energy we get out so the pump has to work harder if it's cold outside. So there's a special parameter for heat pumps called the coefficient of performance or COP. And uh, it tells you how much more heat, how much heat you capture from the environment. And it tells you how much more heat you've captured than the work you put in to operate the pump. So here on the 16th, if you remember, it was very mild. And so the COP was five. That means for one kilowatt hour of electrical energy, the heat pump was producing five kilowatt hours of heat. That's really very good performance from a heat pump. But on this day, when it was very cold, uh, one kilowatt hour of electrical energy only produced three kilowatt hours of heat energy. Now, three times more heat out than the energy you put in is still very, very good. But uh, it's just to show you that uh, this, fi this figure, the COP, varies uh, depending on the outside temperature and how hot you want to make things inside your house. So that's the air source heat pump and uh, it replaces a gas boiler, supplies hot water to a home, it extracts heat from cold outside air uh, and it has a coefficient of performance, that's one of the key numbers it describes it and typically it's about three. Uh, the key thing is it delivers more heat energy than the electrical energy it consumes, which is just brilliant engineering. And it reduces, using a heat pump, you reduce carbon dioxide emissions associated with heating. Uh, gas boilers are absolutely terrible for producing carbon dioxide emissions. Absolutely terrible. Okay, so that's uh, air source heat pumps. This is me, my name is Michael de Podesta, uh, uh, this is my blog, uh, and this is my Twitter handle, and this is an email if you want to get in touch. Thank you very much.